this is how once you have this this understanding of the Hadarat al Khams, once you have the understanding of Alam al Khayal, you are e you are able to 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 connect the, the 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 meanings of the Quran to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and to the universe and to what's happening in in uh, uh, in the cosmos. So inshallah I will stop here uh, 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 and uh, open the door for uh, any questions that uh, any anybody might have inshallah uh, 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 so inshallah you can go ahead I think we have about four minutes inshallah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Masha'Allah. To know the meaning of the events that occur in this world from Alam al Malakut. Masha'Allah. Sayyidi Shaykh al Akbar says, So one of the uh, one of the basic maxims of tahqiq is also another ancient uh, concept that comes from ancient Greeks or the ancient Greeks believed in it, and that is know thyself, know yourself. And this is known as uh, another hadith, uh, hadith, hadith or athar, and that is that the the uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Man arafa nafsa," or as the Prophet Sallallahu said, or it could be an athar. That whoever knows himself knows his Lord. Man arafa nafsahu, arafa rabbahu. In other narrations, it's man arafa nafsahu, faqad arafa rabbahu. That whoever knows himself has already known his Lord. So Sayyid Shaykh al Akbar says, he says, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, are in two stages of knowing themselves. In the first stage, they know, they begin to know themselves based on what happens to them in the world. They are aware of, they, 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 they pay close attention to how the tajalliyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His manifestations, deal with them in the world. They have bad days, they have good days, they have joyful days, they have tremendous uh, openings, or they have constriction. And they know from these events, they begin to discover themselves. They begin to discover their dispositions. They begin to discover how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with them. After that process occurs, then they ascend to a higher station where they know what will happen to them because they have gained full knowledge of their own selves. So when they, are, when they go into a particular place, they know exactly how people will deal with them. Because they know their dispositions and they know the dispositions of the people there. Because they have gained full knowledge of themselves. Right? And so the key to this is knowing yourself. Because remember, you are the smallest cosmos. Everything that happens to you happens in the great cosmos. And, and, and uh, uh, so Shaykh al-Akbar says... Uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with you as you are in yourself and his manifestations in the universe deal with you as you are in yourself there is not a fault that exists outside that we perceive except that we are a mirror for it it exists within our own selves and this is based on a hadith where the Prophet وسلم, a hadith Qudsi where the Prophet speaks uh, 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 about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the third person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana abdi bi. I am as my servant thinks of me. So if you think, if we think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good terms, that's what we will find. And if we think otherwise, um, and if we think otherwise, then uh, uh, that's what we will. That's what we will receive. Alhamdulillah, I, 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 I just got that we have ninety minutes, so we have done more than enough time, inshallah. Um, but I hope that answers the question. The key is to know the self. 
And knowing the self is obtained uh, through much divine remembrance. Divine remembrance is basically like uh, like holding an axe and going into a gold mine. And you, you just keep chugging away at the excess rock until you discover the gold mine that's inside, the gold that resides inside. And uh, that's what Dikir does. And the most important Dikir to do that uh, is the Dikir of sending salutations and blessings upon the Insani Kamil, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reason being is that once you do salawat, then you are it's not only building a connection between you and the Prophet Sallallahu it's emptying your being of all the excess layers and dressing yourself with the character traits of the Prophet Sallallahu so that two things will happen. One, you will gain this ability to know what will happen to you because you have gained full knowledge of yourself because yourself is in harmony with the Prophet This is what awliya try to do. Their whole journey is to become mirrors of the Prophet because once you are a mirror of the Prophet you know how the world will treat with you. Because it will, it will, it will treat the, the world will treat you like it treats the Prophet The world will love you. The universe will love you. And, and, and although the Prophet Sallallahu faced hardships, those hardships were, uh, 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 were for him nothing but love. Nothing but love in the sense that even the manifestations of majesty, of, of, of him being, of being shown animosity, was, uh, was in, rea in reality just a veil of, 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 of uh, non-existence over a trace of divine wisdom. And so the key is to find the divine wisdom in all the events that occur. But that can only occur, that can only happen while somebody is trying to know themselves. And the self is the biggest abyss that people are afraid of delving into. And this is especially true today. That uh, we are willing to talk about everything. But our own selves, we're afraid. Because, uh, because we realize, fitratan, we, we know by our own instincts that what it means to know the self is to, to, to have annihilation, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can be completely purified. And that is frightening. But that is the task. So knowing the self, uh, uh, sending salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu and maintaining a connection to the Quran uh, in order and maintaining in the connection with the world because that is the greater book that's the greater human being that is the manifestation of the, the in its pure form it is the manifestation the, the, the expansion of the perfect form of the Prophet Sallallahu as an insane form so I hope that somewhat answers the question itself Any other questions, inshallah? MashaAllah. Quran is healing. In the context of, uh, of what we have said, and uh, the verse that is referred to here, of course, is uh, and, and a healing for what is in the chest. Now, Sheikh Al Akbar, when he looks at the word sudur, sudur is usually translated as chests. And the common understanding is that the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, provides a healing to one's chest or the heart. But Sadr, which is the singular of Sudur, has another meaning. 
which is the first thing that emanates, the first thing that comes forth. Like, uh, in the past, Muslim scholars were oftentimes given the title of Sadr al-Ummah. Right? Sadr al-Ummah, or the face of the Ummah. Like, the representative. Right? So, for example, you'll hear uh, uh, 